All right, so today, it's Saturday, it's the 16th of May, and we are going to work on getting my uh, 2008 Chevy uh, Silverado ready for the camping season, <clears throat> which means uh, tire rotation, oil change, fuel filter change. Uh, just a glow plug just went out on it. I'm going to be changing the glow plug. Going to be servicing the transmission. <clears throat> so we'll just be doing that through the course of the day, and I'll bring you guys along and show you how I do it. And uh, first thing I've got to do is uh, over there is. Uh, my jerry cans that I keep my oil in. I gotta haul those up to the parts store and empty them. They're clear full. And then uh, gotta move my fleet around so that uh, I have room. Get it here in the garage. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the cars and run up to the parts store and get rid of the oil and then uh, when I get back I'll get started on showing you how I uh, do my uh, oil changes and stuff. So, see you in a bit. Okay. So, one of the things, the other things I'm going to do on this today is change the serpentine belt. I don't know if you guys can hear that little kind of a chirping sound. But that usually means that your belt, serpentine belt's really dry and cracked and I've never changed it. The truck has a little over a hundred thousand miles on it. So we're gonna change the uh, serpentine belt as well. Like I said, I don't know if you could hear that chirping sound, but that's one of the other chores we're gonna be doing on this truck today. So just wanted you to hear that before I forgot about it. And now we're gonna load the oil and head to the uh, recycler. So I've been locking my tailgate. I keep a couple things back there. I have a little lawnmower business with my grandsons. And I've been locking my tailgate because while we were out of town uh, last week, uh, someone jumped my fence and uh, broke into my work truck. So I've been locking things up, making sure that I keep things locked. So just for you guys that, uh, well, how do I say it, uh, this truck when you change the oil takes just under three gallons of oil. Uh, a normal engine, you know, depending V8 or 6 or 4 cylinder is sometimes 5 or 6 quarts. So these diesels take 
uh, double the amount of oil, uh, three gallons. So that's why, <laughs> you know, you only have to do a couple oil changes and uh, you you got a lot of oil on your hands. So try to do the uh, eco-responsible thing. Uh, take it and uh, recycle it. There was a day when I uh, had a hole out in the backyard and I just dump it in the in the hole, but trying to be a little more earth friendly. And they recycle it and make other stuff out of it, so do what you can do. Hopefully that'll hold it. <laughs> okay. Off to the recycler. Okay, so you can see that I've got an engine light on. So let's uh, shut it off and let's plug in the So we got the scan tool hooked up. Says there's two codes found. Read the code. So I'm taping. So it says that the cylinder seven glow plug has an open circuit. Okay, so I got an engine light. I've read the codes. It says that it's cylinder seven glow plug. Uh, circuit open so that's why I'm changing the glow plug is because I've got an engine light so we'll be uh, doing that as well as changing the belt the filters inside and outside the transmission oil filter rotating the tires changing the fuel filter all kinds of stuff so I just wanted to show you this let's let's get started on uh, and I'll take you through the steps that I do Okay, the first thing I like to do is I keep a bunch of <laughs> sorry, I keep a bunch of cardboard around uh, for when I do service. So what I do is I'll take it off. 
push this under the areas that I'm going to be working. The transmission, the oil, and uh, that way if I spill, I don't spill on my concrete, I spill on the uh, cardboard. So let me get that set up. All right, so I'm having some issues with my recorder. But anyway, let me show you what I got. I've got the truck jacked up. I've got it on jack stands. I've wiggled it. It's sturdy. So now I'm going to take the front wheels off. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the oil draining. So I've got a couple buckets. I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to do the transmission and the engine oil so let me get uh, that set up and let's get those draining and then we'll start on this other stuff because I like to let my oil drain well and if I have other things to do and then gives it a chance to really drain out good so let me get that set up okay so there we have the transmission plug what size is that that's a 15 okay there's my 15 Okay, so I took this out for a little ride and uh, got it warm. So I'm really struggling with this camera today. I don't know what the deal is, but anyway, I don't know if we got the part where I was talking about the filter or not, but I changed the internal transmission filter once a year the exterior one this one right here every oil change and then I pulled the drain plug on the oil and we're just gonna let that sit and drip while we move on to other things I like to let it sit and drip especially these diesels because they get so uh, so dirty and contaminated that I just like to let them drip so We'll let this drip for a few minutes while we tackle some other stuff. Bring you with me. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, pull the tires off the front wheels. Okay, let's see if that helps so I'm gonna see if I can find the numbers on the, which cylinder is number seven I thought it said someplace on here which was number one So, I don't see anything that says number one. Okay, so, let me go to my phone. Siri, can you show me where number one cylinder is on a 2008 Chevy Duramax? on the web okay let's see what it says
Okay. So, the firing order. So it looks to me like number one cylinder is on the passenger side. So it's the passenger side rear glow plug that's out, number seven. So I don't need to take the driver's side off. So, but I'm rotating the tires, so I still am, so I'm still going to pull the uh, front tires off. So, okay. So we'll get in there and once we get that off we'll meter it as well and verify that that's the bad one but let me uh, set you up and we'll pull the front wheels off. Now I don't know if in the other video but the, the fluids are still draining. Oh, made a mess. That's why you put the cardboard down is so when you make a mess it doesn't end up on your floor and diesel oil is so sticky the only stuff worse than diesel oil is uh, what they call spuge that comes out of a two-stroke motor motorcycle I showed you that on the other day when we were working on the KTM so let me get the stuff set up and I'll bring you back Seven eighths, but I think these are metric, so let me grab a, a metric. Okay, so I think twenty one fits it better. Twenty two actually is the right size. Okay, so check the front end. Nice and tight. So the other thing you want to do is while you're down here is check your brakes. I'll show you guys on the other side.
These have plenty of meat on them. They're in good shape. Other thing is we're going to grease it while we got it up here. So Come with me. Okay, to take these plastic caps off, you can use the impact, but you don't use it to put them on. Again, I'm going to check the brakes. Yeah, they look about like the other side. Rotors. Probably next time I do the brakes, I'll change the rotors. Those are factory. Still have the, if you can see, it still has the factory retaining ring on there. So when I do the brakes on it next time, I'm going to uh, do rotors as well. They're not that expensive and it's just good insurance. But as long as the brakes are good and they're stopping good, we're going to leave it the way it is. Okay. Alright. So the next thing to do... is to pull this uh, inner fender out so let me get that out it's just a matter of of uh, there's some screws that come around here and then I don't know if you can see them very well but there's these little push-in tabs you pull those out there's a couple of things hooked to it from the inside you push out got to take the mud flap off and uh, once we do that I'll uh, show you the we'll start on the glow plug okay so as I'm taking this out talk a little bit about uh, why I do the service on this truck I I generally don't do the service on my other two vehicles I have a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee and I have we have a Ford Explorer and I have only changed the oil myself personally in the uh, Jeep one time and it's because you can get them serviced so cheaply uh, that it isn't worth my time to, uh, to service it. Uh, you gotta watch the people and trust them but I take uh, I take the Jeep over to the the Dodge dealer, and I buy a package of three oil changes. Costs like a hundred dollars or something like that for three oil changes. And for the aggravation that well, I shouldn't say aggravation, but for the work that this is, it's not worth it. Uh, so I have my other cars serviced at the dealership because they do it for so cheap of course one of the things that they'll do is they'll try to upsell you uh, when you're at the you know they'll find everything that is wrong and try to upsell you on a bunch of service and sometimes you know 
it's a good thing, but a lot of times they're just, like I say, I'm selling you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, a service on a diesel is like 200 bucks. And so, me being the frugal person that I am, 200 bucks is too much for a service. So that's why I do the diesel myself. Uh, I had a motorhome, a 2000 uh, motorhome, and uh, I didn't service it either. I took that into the Ford dealer, and that was a that was a once a year a once a year service. So that's why I took that one there is because you only do it once a year. So, okay. I don't know if I'm blocking it off, but these things, I got this little tool that me and my hoarding again. Can't get rid of a one by two. But you, uh, these have a center piece, and then you pull the outside. Work your little fork tool behind there. That's a different size. It has a couple different sizes. Oh, one more. light down here, I can't see. All right, let me get this out of here. Okay. So I've got the uh, inner fender out and where are you where are you so that's a glow plug that's a glow plug that's a glow plug and if I'm right this one here let's see if I can get you set in here somehow that one there is number seven right here and can you see it that there's number seven so and then also uh, right there is the fuel filter we're going to be changing so let me grab my meter and let's check that okay so I think let's change this pull that down and stick it under there see what size that is
Okay, so I think that's a, that's an eight. Okay, so there's that. You got to reuse. You got to reuse the nut, and then it's a, a twelve. Okay. Okay, so there it is. Okay, let me set you over here. So you get you if I can get you to see what I'm seeing. Okay, so I have my meter. Okay. And if you listen, you can tell when there's continuity. So this is the old, let me pull you back. This is this glow plug I just took out. Hear that? No beat. Here's the new one. You hear that? So that's one way to check to make sure you're doing the right glow plug is to get your own meter your voltage ohm meter and this one here like I say this is, has a tone but got a tone that's the that's the new one hold it nothing see I'm holding it nothing and then this is the old, the one that's burned up no matter what I do no tone no tone so that's that now I'm gonna go and get some anti-seize and put on this and I'll be right back okay so see if I can get you set up in there again so I got the glow plug in put the wire back on and then put the nut on it That's one thing that's nice about these Duramaxes is that these glow plugs, uh, they do go out, you know, I mean the truck has, uh, has over a hundred thousand miles on it and so, but they are easy to get to. Uh, Grab my eight and uh, just put a little snug. On. Oh, might have snugged it. Don't want to snug it into the motor. Pay attention. Okay, maybe just a touch more. Okay. What's funny is, is uh, when I came home from camp in the last time, I uh, steam cleaned the, or blew off the dirt off the engine, and I went to get in it, and uh, I went to get in it to start it, and <laughs> I had, I had uh, an engine light. And so I read the code, and it was uh, it was the uh, glow plug after I had steam cleaned it, and I really didn't put any water down here. I just did the I basically just did the top of the motor, but coincidence. Okay, now we're going to work on the the uh, fuel filter. 
So I'm going to go get a little cup and open the drain up and drain as much as it is, much of it as I can out before we uh, put the new one in. Okay, so you uh, just open this drain up. Mm, not a lot of not a lot of fuel gonna come out of there. That's interesting. Okay, well we'll leave that out. <clears throat> Actually if that's all that's gonna come out, we'll put it back in. There we go. How are you guys? All right. So it didn't draw up hardly any fuel. Which is interesting. I don't think this year a uh, Duramax has a a pickup pump. And what a pickup pump is is uh, it doesn't have a pump in the tank. It uh, this particular injection system pulls the fuel from uh, tank to the injector pump. That's why when guys do uh, performance upgrades on them. The first thing they do is they put a, a lift pump and filters and stuff so that they can push the fuel up to the motor so that they can uh, get those higher horsepower numbers. I'll be back. Okay, we're over here on the bench. And a couple things you need to do. Oh, man. never had that happen before so let's take a look see if I can see what you're seeing I've never had the filter I've never had the filter come out Let's see what happens. I guess it's okay. So, each new uh, 
each time you buy one of these you get a new gasket so we'll replace the gasket there's enough diesel on this that to lube it up okay this little thing right here is your water if uh, if that floats it only floats in water if that floats up it makes a connection or if it floats down it makes the connection one of the two and uh, alerts you that there's water in your fuel And uh, put the water drain. Now, if you did have water in your fuel, this is the thing that you would uh, you'd unscrew this and. Uh, would uh, that's where the water you could drain the water out of your system so we'll put this gasket on there and I'll put a little bit of diesel on it and then we'll reinstall it okay so I'm just gonna use a little of this diesel fuel that I drained out And then before I put it in there, uh, I've got a can of diesel in the back of the truck. So let me fill that up and then you don't have to spend as much time. There's a primer bulb on top of the pump. So if you ever run a diesel out of fuel because it doesn't have a pump in the tank, it can't pull... Uh, the fuel up so you have to prime it so one of the ways of doing that is uh, there's a pump on top and you can sit and pump it and pump, pump it until it gets hard or you fill the filter first and then you pump it and you, it's a little less work so let me fill the filter and I'll bring you back okay so this truck has a really small tank so I always carry five gallons of diesel with me when I travel it has a it has a fuel used gauge in the dash and that's within a half a gallon of that's within a half a gallon of being full or empty so what I do is I carry an extra five gallons of diesel with me so just in case I had a Dodge pickup before this one I had a Dodge one ton diesel and it had it had a 35 gallon tank 
So, you know, and it got 15 miles a gallon, uh, like pulling my boat. And uh, so it would go 450 miles on uh, a tank of gas, but this gets about, oh, average is about 11, 12 miles a gallon pulling my trailer. So 26 gallons, you can go about 260 miles. So you, you, end, you end up pulling over and, you know, fueling up a lot, but uh, anyway. That's why I have diesel here for that. And then, if you look right up here, where my hand is, is that, and I'm pumping that. And it just got hard to pump. So, plug the wiring back in. And we'll leave the inner fender off until we uh, start it. So two things we did over here. Replace the glow plug. Replace the fuel filter. Uh, I replaced this one. That's the first one I replaced. And uh, so they're not bad to do. Uh, okay, so the next thing is... Let's do the serpentine belt. So while we were working, uh, I have my compressor running, and I have another video I'm going to show you, but this little piece right here, I had my compressor running, and I hear this rush of no air, and in the video you'll see what I did. I added. I added this regulator assembly and it was leaking and so I started working on it and I tightened it too tight and busted this valve and this came shooting off and made a hell of a mess. Noise anyway. So we'll bring you back. <laughs> 